Now, all right, what we were doing yesterday, I remember we were citing, well, we were citing evidence in order to, uh, well, first, we were identifying things. Josephine Baker's speech, and we took it page by page, and we tried to identify the theme in different parts of the speech. And today, we are going to actually uh, do a quick video, one that we couldn't do yesterday, on just some background about Josephine Baker. I think that'll help as we move into our, uh, our today we get more practice right, with citing evidence. So we identified a thing, right? And then we uh, cited evidence right, to support that thing. Now, with, uh, let's see, I'm going to put you know, what I have on the board here. You guys remember, I am the law. And, who? I want to see, is anyone familiar with this word, claim? We talked about this before. You know, K speech. Yeah, and the reason that I can say 
say it's true, right? Because I just gave you two pieces of evidence here, right? When she tried to pursue school, and she was almost killed. And uh, also, she was told repeatedly, right, when she was interviewed as a, as a child, that she couldn't, go, or women were not allowed think, to openly, openly pursue education there. So I've got two things that support my claim. Now, one more claim. You guys just read about here. Uh, MLK's speech.
people. But different people, what, what was happening? Right, what was the thing you just said? And just different people were, were, just said. Sorry for the hmm? Okay. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Good. We could say discriminated. Just give it a few seconds.
starring in three films between 1927 and 1935, which were commercially successful in Europe. In 1934, Josephine starred in the opera La Creole at a theatre in Paris, for which she took months of lessons with a vocal coach. Her dedication was rewarded as critics praised her performance. Hoping to mimic this success at home, in 1936, Josephine returned to the US to star in Ziegfeld Follies on Broadway. Her performance was met with unfavorable reviews and she was soon replaced by Gypsy Rose Lee. Josephine returned to Paris and in 1937 married a Jean Leon and became a French citizen. In September 1939, following the German invasion of Poland, Josephine was recruited by French military intelligence. She used her celebrity to attend gatherings with high-ranking diplomatic officials where she gathered information. After the Germans invaded France, Josephine also sheltered friends loyal to Free France, the government in exile led by Charles de Gaulle. As an entertainer, she had a promise to travel around Europe without attracting attention. Josephine would visit neutral countries such as Portugal with information for transmission to England, written in invisible ink on her sheet music or pinned into her underwear. In 1941, Josephine was working for the French resistance in Morocco when she suffered a miscarriage, which resulted in severe infection requiring a hysterectomy. Following her surgery, she developed life-threatening peritonitis and septicemia. Josephine miraculously survived, and despite this traumatic experience, within weeks she began touring North Africa to entertain Allied troops. For her service in the war, Josephine was awarded the Rosette de la Résistance and became the first American-born woman to receive the Croix de Guerre. She was also made a Chevalier of the Légion d'Honneur by General Charles de Gaulle himself. With her reputation greatly bolstered by her wartime heroics, in 1951, Josephine was invited back to the US for an engagement in a Miami nightclub. She was offered $10,000 but refused to perform to a segregated audience. The club eventually agreed to her condition, and after a sold out run, Josephine took her show on a national tour. When she had first arrived back in the States, she was refused reservations at 36 hotels. Later at a store club in Manhattan, Josephine was refused service, and the actress Grace Kelly stormed out with her entire party in protest. The two would go on to become lifelong friends. Josephine later opposed the store club's policy of actively discouraging African American patrons, for which she was vilified by the press and accused of harboring communist sympathies, a serious allegation of she also worked closely with the NAACP and was named their Woman of the Year in 1951 at a parade of 100,000 people in Harlem, New York. In 1963, Josephine spoke at the March on Washington alongside Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. She was the only official female speaker and introduced fellow female civil rights activists, including Rosa Parks and Daisy Bates. Following King's assassination in 1968, his widow, Coretta Scott King, approached Josephine to offer her the leadership of the American Civil Rights Movement. After much consideration, she declined, stating that her children were too young to lose their mother. Following her divorce from Jean Leon in 1940, in 1947, Josephine married a French composer, Joe Bouillon. Their relationship ended in 1961 with her fourth divorce. Josephine adopted 12 children in her lifetime and often referred to her family as the Rainbow Tribe. Her children, two daughters and ten sons, included Marianne, Jean Claude, and Noel from France, Celina from Morocco, Jeanne from Korea, Akio from Japan, Luis from Colombia, Jari from Finland, Moyes from Israel, Brahim from Algeria, Mara from Venezuela, and Kofi from the Cote d'Ivoire. Josephine was 